All right, welcome to our third lecture on photosynthesis. In this lecture, we're going to continue with our exploration of the light reactions of photosynthesis and finish that up. So in the last lecture, we took a deep dive into photosystem two, and we saw that it can harvest the energy from light, and it's going to pop off electrons that reduce a plastoquinone molecule. This reduced plastoquinone is going to go over to the cytochrome B6F complex. The cytochrome B6F complex is going to be a pumping station, so it's going to pump protons into the luminal side of the thylakoid space. So the stroma of the chloroplast would be on this side, stroma, lumen. And you can also see that protons are generated from the oxidation of water at photosystem two as well. And then we're also pulling protons from the stromal side when we are reducing our plastoquinone molecule. The B6F complex is also going to pump a total of four protons for every two plastocyanins that get reduced um, and for every one molecule of plastoquinone that gets reduced. This has to go through a Q cycle, very similar to our third station in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Because our plastocyanin is a little peripheral protein, they can only take one electron at a time. And so it's going to transport those electrons over to photosystem one. Photosystem one is going to transport the electrons up to this molecule. And then NADP oxidoreductase is going to transfer those electrons onto the molecule of NADPH. That's the final electron acceptor. So that's the full electron transport chain for photosynthesis. The proton gradient that gets generated in the thylakoid space or the lumen of the thylakoid is going to be utilized in the ATP synthase protein, which is very similar in homology to what we saw with the mitochondrial ATP synthase. And we're going to get the generation of ATP during this process. So our two endpoints or products of the reaction, ATP, NADPH, and we're utilizing water in this process and evolving oxygen at photosystem two. So let's take a little bit deeper look at our cytochrome B6F complex. So as we saw in the mitochondria, when we have a Q cycle, we need two molecules of the plastoquinone to bind with this enzyme. The first one is gonna be oxidized and the second one is going to be totally reduced. The reduced one is going to come in and it's going to donate one electron that's going to end up going to the plastocyanin, which is the small peripheral protein uh, attached to the B6F complex. You can't see it in this diagram, but in this one, you can see the plastocyanin over here. So one electron will go to this guy and then one electron is going to go down to the oxidized quinone structure. And you can see that you're pumping two protons during that process. And then this has to happen twice. Another reduced molecule of the plastoquinone will have to bind. You're going to send one electron uh, to the plastocyanin again, and one more electron to fully reduce that quinone that gets bound uh, during the first transport process. Two more protons will get pumped during that process. So in this Q cycle process, two fully reduced molecules of plastoquinone are going to bind and become oxidized. And one molecule of oxidized quinone will bind and get fully reduced during that process. And four protons will be pumped you're going to generate two molecules of the plastocyanin in the reduced state. They each come by, pick up their electron, transport their electron to the next station. So this diagram, I think it's a little bit easier to see the processing of the electrons during the binding process in the Q cycle. So this side of the diagram is showing the different cofactors that are bound in here. You've got a couple of heme cofactors, 
the plastoquinone exchanging site, another heme down here, and an iron sulfur complex as well, and then another plastoquinone exchangeable site down here. So you can see the reduced forms are going to come in. Two of them have to come in. They get oxidized. They don't come in at the same time. They come one at a time. One electron goes up to get loaded onto an oxidized plastoquinone. One electron is going to go down, and it's going to reduce the plastocyanin. And then the second molecule will bind. This one goes away. Another one comes in, picks up the second electron, and then you've got to fully reduce this oxidized plastoquinone up here. So that's the Q cycle. So this Q cycle happens here. You end up producing two molecules of the plastocyanin. This small peripheral protein is going to slide over here and bump into photosystem one, and it's going to drop off its electrons there. So here's our little plastocyanin molecule. Um, you can see it's got a copper that gets bound inside the core structure. This helps it coordinate its electron and carry the electron to the next station. So one thing that you'll notice as the electrons are flowing through this electron transport chain, as the light energy comes in from the sun, it's going to raise that electron's energy way up. And as it's flowing through the plastoquinone to the cytochrome B6F complex and onto the plastocyanin, you can see that it loses a lot of energy as that process is happening. When it gets to PS1, it's actually fairly low in energy again. And so at PS1, another uh, light impulse is going to come in here. And when that photon hits, it's going to re-excite the electron that was dropped off there. And so it pushes it to a high energy state and gets it to go to the ferrodoxin, the ferrodoxin NADP reductase, and then the electrons get dropped off at the NADPH. And you can see that they are at a mid-range level when they get dropped off here. This can then go over and drop off the electrons in the Calvin cycle where they're going to reduce the carbon dioxide to help make the sugar molecule. So this is photosystem one or the plastocyanin ferrodoxin oxidoreductase. It's also an integral membrane protein complex that uses light energy to catalyze the transfer of electrons across the thylakoid membrane. And it's going to transfer them from plastocyanin to ferrodoxin. And the photon energy absorbed by photosystem one also is going to pump protons that help produce that proton motive force used to generate ATP. Photosystem one is composed of more than 110 cofactors. So it has significantly more antenna region and chlorophyll cofactors that are associated with this protein. Here's a little ferrodoxin protein. Uh, this is attached as a peripheral protein up on the stromal side of the electron transport chain. And you can see it has an iron sulfur complex in here that helps coordinate the electrons as they get transported out of photosystem one from the plastocyanin. So the ferrodoxins will typically carry out single electron transfer. So the electrons will move one at a time through this system as well onto the NADPH. So the ferrodoxins will typically carry out single electron transfers. So we need one more protein to help us in this process, and this is the ferrodoxin NADP reductase enzyme. This one is shown in the yellow here, and it's going to take two electrons from two ferrodoxin molecules and transport them to a molecule of NADP. So the NADP can house two electrons when it is fully reduced. So these electrons come in one at a time, and they have to move through an FAD molecule. The ferrodoxin NADP reductase enzyme is utilizing the FAD as a prosthetic group or a cofactor in its reaction mechanism. So that FAD gets reduced first, 
and then it can reduce the molecule of NADP. So interestingly, electron cycling from the ferrodoxin to the NADPH will only occur in the light, and this is because this FNR protein, or the ferrodoxin NADP reductase, is inhibited in the dark, and it won't be functional. So there's this weird thing that can happen during the electron transport of electrons in the light reactions. And so you can see normally you would go from ferrodoxin through the ferrodoxin NADP reductase, and those electrons would be delivered to the molecule of NADPH. But sometimes maybe you don't have any oxidized NADP that's really ready to accept those electrons, they can get recycled. And they do that by being transferred to a different protein called the NDH1. This is very homologous to the first complex in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. It's also a pumping station. So the energy from the electrons here will go in here and be utilized to pump electrons into the luminal space. And this can then go back to plastoquinone, and it can go through the cytochrome B6F complex again. So it's kind of this cyclic process where the electrons will get re-energized here, go to ferrodoxin, and then keep going back through the cytochrome B6F and the, the photosystem 1. and can be utilized to generate more energy and energy in the form of that proton gradient. So what this cyclic flow actually does is it uncouples the process of energy generation. You can produce a lot of ATP without having to get rid of your electrons and drop them off at the NADPH. So it uncouples ATP production from the production of sugar molecules inside the chloroplast. So here in this slide, you can see that NDH1 protein it, it looks a lot like the complex one from the mitochondrial electron transport chain. It has high homology with that protein. And you can see that it's actually going to accept this ferrodoxin. It's going to come over and bind with this, drop off the electrons. That causes the pumping of the protons. And the electrons go back to this molecule of plastoquinone. More protons get pulled from the stromal side here to fully reduce that molecule. And then it can go back into the cytochrome B6F and then get transferred to photosystem 1. Notice that photosystem 2 is not even shown in this diagram because it's not really involved anymore in this process. Originally, the electrons would have come from there and gone through photosystem 1, but then they start just recycling here. All right, so in summary, we learned about the linear pathway. Uh, this is the one that we need if we want to generate sugar inside the stroma. So the light reactions, this is your typical light reaction pathway. Electrons ultimately harvested from water are going to pass through photosystem 2. They get docked onto the plastoquinone and transported to cytochrome B6F which then transports them to the plastocyanin. Plastocyanin drops them off at photosystem 1, which puts them onto ferrodoxin, and then the ferrodoxin NADP reductase will transfer them to a molecule of NADPH. The proton gradient is used by the ATP synthase to generate ATP in that process. And then you can have uncoupling during this process and the electrons, maybe they don't have any uh, oxidized NADP to be able to go and produce that molecule. So if you've shut down the Calvin cycle for some reason and you're not producing sugar, you can still generate ATP by going through the cyclic process. The ferrodoxin can bind to NADH1, cause the pumping of more protons, and the reduction of the plastoquinone so it can go back through cytochrome B6F and back through photosystem 1 and back to ferrodoxin. If the reductase is bound with the molecule of oxidized NADP, 
then the electrons could go in that in that direction and make a molecule of NADPH. If not, it'll keep doing this cyclic process so you can still generate energy for the chloroplast. Also note that plants have mitochondria. Plants have both mitochondria and chloroplasts. So the mitochondria is actually utilizing sugar that the plant makes as food, right? And it's going to do the same mitochondrial generation of ATP for the plant. So the plant has two sources of ATP energy. It has the chloroplast generating ATP. Most of that's going to making sugar. And then the sugar is being utilized by the plant inside the mitochondria to make ATP for cellular processes. All right, so that's an introduction to the light reactions of photosynthesis. In the next set of lectures, we'll take a look at the Calvin cycle and the generation of sugar.